Hey guys, what's up? It's Ray. Welcome back to Ray Arc, the channel that has all things architecture and stuff. Cue the title sequence. Ding 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 ding. Yay! All right, we're back with a new video, and before I start this video and get to the whole point of the video, I want to apologize to you guys for the implant hiatus. I obviously took a long break that was unintentional, but it's only because I need to balance my work and school. And I thought at the beginning that I can fit YouTube videos and creation of videos into my schedule, but I just couldn't find time. There's only 24 hours a day and I just couldn't cram anything into it. And so that's the main reason why I couldn't make videos and then I just took a long break. I'm taking a week off from work this week. Um, to make videos for you guys and for this channel. I just feel like I want to make more content Like you guys are always subscribing new people are coming in But then they don't get new content and I just feel like I'm letting everyone down and I feel so bad about it anyway Here's a video. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys probably know that I started school already and I'm actually two semesters in I took my very first course in the spring and I got an A in that class so I was really proud of myself and then I just finished a summer course this summer and I got an A plus in that course and I just felt like oh my god I can't believe I actually did it um, I have many more semesters to come but then I just feel like it's time for me to take a break from classes and schoolwork for a little while and also from work like this week I took a week off um, to kind of just recuperate myself and also to create some videos for this channel because I know this channel has been very, very empty and I feel sorry. But anyways, follow me on Instagram for live updates of like my life or like what I'm doing outside of just talking to a camera on YouTube. But also um, because I'm in school now, that kind of triggered some old memories of architecture school. And I'm not studying architecture now, I'm studying literature and just writing because I want to, if you guys have not watched my other videos, I really want to write for architecture and just kind of combine the two worlds together. Going back to class right now reminded me of me as an undergrad studying architecture and I was like, you know what, I want to make a video on that. And so I googled architecture school questions or tags and stuff and I found some good questions and I compiled it together in this one video and let's get right to it let go I don't know why my voice just went that high I hmm. hopefully these questions are helpful for prospective students who are trying to get into architecture school I know these questions are just kind of very vague sometimes but like I don't know for me I wish I had like these videos as I was applying to architecture school because some of these questions are more similar to the questions that you guys ask me like Q&A questions and some of them are just really uh, personal experience based so I want to kind of get that out there in case some of you guys are curious to know how I felt about architecture school so hopefully like my stories that I'm going to tell you in this video are going to be helpful to you guys all right I have the questions right here and uh, let's go I studied a total of five years and I think that's a typical standard for every uh, accredited school in the US. I'm not sure about out of the country, out of you know United States, but for the most part, I think most schools, um, architecture schools actually, uh, they require you to take five years of classes under the architecture program. And I believe the very final or the fifth year is like the comprehensive design year. Um, they used to call it thesis, but I think they changed it now. And basically that one year is for you to kind of come up and design your own project without any like sort of scope or anything. It's really just about you. And so that's what I did five years and I did my time and now I'm actually... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Long story, I'm doing something else now, but it's still close to architecture. So I feel like um, no matter what you do with architecture in terms of your degree, you can always attach yourself and attach itself to other kind of fields and industries. Yeah, that's, that's my answer. I think the most, I think the best part about architecture school is that you get to really make friends who are long-term friends because you guys I guess you can say like you guys have suffered through certain things together um, for example like all-nighters or um, having a very crappy professor I think the difference between architecture school and other majors is that you are gonna be studying architecture with this group of people whether you like it or not 
but you're going to be seeing them for the next four to five years. Versus if you're an English major like I am right now, um, I, you know, I see these classmates for this semester, but I'm pretty sure I won't see him or her in the following semesters. Honestly, I just feel like um, the architecture community in a campus is more tightly knit than it is when you're in a different major. And I think that's what I like most about architecture schools because you have a strong community of people who are like-minded and also um, you can bounce ideas off each other versus other majors. I think the toughest part of architecture school is definitely the, the amount of work I don't like. And I also don't like uh, the fact that your body kind of goes through a lot in architecture school. Honestly, I felt like I aged 10 years when I was in the five years studying architecture. I don't know, I just feel like it is really draining sometimes and you really have to learn how to handle all the stress and all the deadlines and stuff in architecture school. But honestly, I wouldn't say that that's like the worst thing, but in a list of things that I liked about architecture school, that would be like the bottom of the list. Um, I have like two stories and they're both related to, to all-nighters because all-nighters always generate the funniest stories. I don't normally do all-nighters when I'm at architecture school, only because I feel like I'm not a night person and I can't produce any work at night. There was that one time when uh, I had to because it was a group project and uh, it wasn't like a, it was a really good group, uh, group project and I really liked it. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay overnight and I'm gonna help out and I'm gonna do this and that and that. But because that was like my very first and official all-nighter, meaning like I actually stayed throughout the entire night and then to the next day without going home, something interesting happened. So uh, apparently I am a sleepwalker and I didn't know that. My studio mates found out before I did. And so what had happened was I apparently knocked out at like after midnight or something when everyone was still working and uh, someone saw me get up with my eyes kind of like half asleep and stuff. I walked out of my studio and I walked down the hall. I don't remember any of this and they're telling me this. So I'm like, I have to believe it now because there's no other memories of it. Someone saw, uh, told me that they saw me walk out of my studio and then walk to a different, walk over to like two studios down the hall and then came back like 15 minutes later and like I had no recollection of it. And so I thought that was kind of freaky but also very weird. And that was like my story, but like no one else told me what else I did. I think, um, what had, like what ended up happening was when I returned to my studio, I just knocked out again. I went back to my same position, and I like I put my head down on like on my hands folded and stuff. I think that's what happened. Um, but I don't remember any of it, and that's what people told me. So I was like, okay, I, okay. Another crazy thing that happened was we got stopped by the police um, because we left our architecture school building too late at night. And usually when we come out of the school building, we have like this park that takes that that's like a shortcut. So like we like to go down the park to get to the subway station. And we figured, you know, it's just like six of us and we can like quietly cut through the park because the park closes, I think at sundown and it's already like 10 o'clock at night. And so we're like, oh, it's gonna be fine. No one's gonna check up on us or whatever. So we did, six of us walked down the park and we didn't get halfway through the park. Cops pull up inside the park, like with the cop car and everything. And you know, the lights were turned on. And I was like, holy crap, we're gonna be in so much trouble. The cops came out and it was like, oh, you guys can't be cutting through this park this late at night. The park is closed. And I was like, I didn't know that and like my other friends were like yeah we didn't know that like obviously we we knew that but we told them that we didn't know that the park was closed so that's what happened and then all they, all they did was um, check our IDs and um, let us go but I thought that was kind of crazy because I never had like an encounter with a cop like that I guess oh another crazy thing I did in architecture school was create a YouTube channel which was very crazy to me because I was like I had this small passion for video making and then we had this studio class where the professor was like, oh, for our final project, you have to present your project in a video format. And I was like, I don't know how to do that, but I'm interested to learn how to do that. So my studio mate, Lee Zhu and I, and you guys probably know Lee Zhu, she's Artsy Rush on YouTube. Uh, we kind of got together and we were like, let's figure this video thing out. And so we did. And then we ended up like creating our own separate YouTube channels. And I was like, that was when I was still watching Prank vs. Prank. 
when that was still a thing and now oh my god time flies but that's kind of crazy too like creating a youtube channel when i was in college in such a stressful environment but i don't regret it one bit uh i really thought this through i honestly didn't have a professor that i really hated but I, th I think my favorite professor would be um, Professor Kreblin because she was the first professor that encouraged me in a way where it wasn't like condescending, you know? A lot of professors will do that to you where they want you to do something. They want to push you to do something, which is a great thing, but they do it in a way where it's like you feel like crap after learning something. But Professor Kreblin didn't do that for me. She kind of challenged me and pushed me, but in a way where I felt like I was proactive and I was um, happy that I learned something new. She was the first professor to kind of push me to create like a 3D model. I hate 3D models. Um, I like like physical models more than creating a 3D model because I just think that it's so annoying to have to go through a program in order to view it and you can't really view it unless you create like renderings and like snapshots of stuff which I think is stupid. Like if I have a physical model I can just see and look at it whenever I want, wherever I want. Um, she did push me to learn how to do 3D modeling and I really appreciate that. And she just made me appreciate architecture as, as an education and also as all sorts of things outside of architecture. In fact, she's probably one of the professors that had that inspired me to write for architecture and also to create like presentation boards that are just aesthetically amazing. Um, she has the eye for it, so I really wanted to work for her too, but I think her firm wasn't hiring at the time when I graduated. I did. I didn't choose to have this rivalry, but honestly, I think if you put a bunch of guys in a room, everyone's just very competitive and it's impossible to not develop rivalries. But it's not, it's not like a malevolent or like a malicious kind of uh, rivalry. It's more like, um, I want to do better, but um, I also won't help you if you need help, that kind of thing, which kind of sucks because uh, if someone needed help, I would definitely help them. Uh. For example, like in my first year, like when I knew nothing about architecture, school, architecture, anything to do with architecture, um, we got like a bunch of assignments and I felt really overloaded. Like I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, but people in my studio, not all of them, but like there are certain people in my studio who um, made it even more difficult for me. And I don't know if it's because I'm an Asian, um, or like one of the only Asians in class or if they just don't like me for whatever reason like I've never met them in my life um, and I think the second day of studio they already tried to give me a hard time but it was whatever it wasn't like, like they destroyed anything of mine it was just kind of like um, they didn't tell me about um, certain things that the professor needed they didn't tell me um, like if I missed something uh, during our conversation they wouldn't remind me of that it's something stupid but that was just kind of small and then I think as I enter like third and fourth year rivalries kind of blew up even more because um, everyone wanted to get that either the higher grade or wanted to be published in the school uh, magazine or whatever it was i can't remember like we had like a like a, a publication uh every year or every semester where we present a bunch of like the top-notch designs obviously i was not part of that because i didn't aim for that i didn't try to design stuff that would attract my professor's attention in order for me to be published. I didn't think it was important, but now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, maybe I should have tried a little bit harder to get into our publication. But that was one of the driving factors in terms of rivalry. People are people don't tear each other down, but people tend to keep to themselves when it comes to like that time of the year. So it's just some stupid rivalry thing. It was not no one was fighting it or anything so honestly i don't think i was really into much rivalries i just don't like when people kind of silently judge you or like silently try to sabotage you um, i think that's just wrong and that's what happened a lot all the time every time we have like a studio final a studio midterm I would either you know, cut class, you know, the classes that don't matter to me that much. In hindsight, I should not have done that because every time I cut a class, I miss a lot of material and I have to like do a lot of catching up. I felt so bad about it because some classes are really great and I had to cut, well, I didn't have to, but like I chose to cut that class just so I can 
get more time to work on my studio project, which ended up being like crappy anyways. So yeah, I did skip classes, but I wouldn't recommend it. So you guys don't do that. Yes, all the time, literally every single course. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but there are some classes that I took that I really liked and I ended up loving it so much that I that, that it became a hobby. So for example, I took um, a pastel course just learning how to draw without using lines and kind of just using pastel to kind of shade and mold um, shapes uh, or mold objects by using shapes and um, shading and stuff. And I thought that was really cool because I can apply it to architecture um, renderings and everything. So I thought that was really cool and I loved pastel ever since. And then um, another course I took was a watercolor course which I thought I would hate because I've done watercolor as a kid and hated it because I was never patient enough for the, the watercolor and the water itself to dry. And so I just had to challenge myself a little bit in that course and then I, I just ended up loving it. Um, it also helped that my favorite professor was teaching it and she's not an architecture professor, but she teaches art inside our architecture building and her name is Professor Ostroff. And I just went to her most recent exhibit um, at my school and you guys probably can see the vlog in my vlog channel. But um, she's amazing and I love her so much and she's um, she's the warmest person ever. And I, I worked for her um, in, at her uh, exhibit once and I, um, I always ask her for like letters of recommendation whenever I needed it because I know she would come through for me. So she's like an amazing person and I owe a lot to her and all of my artistic abilities come from her I would I would have to say that like literally everything I know about art is from Professor Ostroff and yeah um yeah like I said um I would not cut classes in order to make time for my studio projects I wouldn't do that again but I would also try harder right now when I'm studying for my masters I'm trying really hard because this time around I'm paying for my own tuition I have no financial aid anymore I have no tap tuition or whatever you call it um, and I have no no um, assistance in terms of money so that's why I'm trying much harder and because I'm trying so much harder I see the results versus when I was in architecture school I kind of just slept through some classes I literally just slept through some classes and I regret it because then my grades were affected I've gotten C's I've gotten a D plus that's the lowest I've gotten a D plus and I can't remember what it was from I believe it was structures or statics I hated that course anyways and it didn't really help me I'm just kidding it's really helpful I would also try harder to um, get out of my comfort zone and learn different programs and learn how to model something in 3d better because I still suck at it right now Um, okay, so I guess this will be like me explaining my thesis project to you guys. I designed, I should start with my site. Okay, let me see if I can remember all my thesis project presentation material. So my site is situated in Flushing, Queens, New York. And it used to be an old abandoned, or it still is, an old abandoned um, R.K. O'Keefe Theater. And it's landmarked, but only for the facade. So the inside and like the back of the building and the back of the house are up for grabs. You can do whatever you want with it. So my project is to use that building as a foundational uh, stone where I kind of start chipping away at it and then hopefully discovering like a gemstone or something. That's the whole idea. I figured that the location is the perfect location for a theater, again, because it is literally at the end of Main Street in Flushing. In case you guys don't know what Main Street Flushing is, it's, it's a hugely populated uh, business district. And there are so many storefronts and so many people walking around the streets. So the theater itself, I'm keeping it as a theater, but I'm transforming it into a more modern theater, or I was transforming it into a more modern theater. On top of that, I, I'm trying to implement um, a music studio music uh, academy um, kind of to just like um, reflect what's going on beneath it in terms of like, performing arts and like musical theater and stuff and then on top of that I plan to have um, a hotel so the idea was that I wanted my building to be more self-sustaining meaning 
financially, um, economically, and everything. So the original RKO Keith Theater was in disrepair only because no one wanted to watch live performances anymore. No one wanted to even travel to Flushing to, to do that. Um, people are going to movie theaters, people are going to Broadway, and no one wanted to come to Queens to check stuff out. So my idea is to have a hotel that can be run 24-7 because people need to sleep, people need to eat, people need to live. The hotel will be the financial source for the theater. And obviously theater would also generate revenue and profit and everything. The reason for my music academy to be sandwiched in between the two um, structures, meaning the um, hotel and the theater, is to kind of just mediate the sound between the two spaces because hotels you tend to want to have a quieter space and the theater is very loud. I kind of wanted to use that um, medium space uh, to kind of be like a sound buffer but also to be a structural space because I needed something to kind of um, cage over the theater in order to erect a skyscraper on top of it. And yeah, that was my thesis project. I was really proud of how it turned out. Obviously I would change a bunch of things but I would just say you know, for the hell of it. I wouldn't change anything about my project because it was so great. But I really loved it and I had a great professor who helped me a lot and I think a lot of what I knew and what I learned came from him. His name was Professor Lance J. Brown. So um, a great professor and I just wanted to say that. It was really fun, like the whole concept and then the whole process of going from from conceptual design all the way to like a final presentation was just so crazy and I wish I, I just want to do that again. All right, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for live updates and turn on the bell notification for new video alerts. And I promise you it won't be annoying because you know, I don't post that many videos. So like every time I post a new video, YouTube will be like, yo Ray finally posted a new video. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video for more in the future. I love you all and thank you so much for watching this video again. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace, bye bye. Yeah.